<laughs> only only real men wear pink. Really? <laughs> <laughs> Good to see you. How are you? Good to see you. Though. I am fine, thank you. How are you? I'm okay. I'm feeling a lot better. Thanks for asking. I think I I think I may have overdone it last week. I was very busy. <laughs> <laughs> I told you. <laughs> you were right. You know me better than I know myself. <laughs> yeah. Uh, is it okay now? Yes, I feel a lot better. Thank you. It's yeah. um, very good. It's nice to see you again. A long time. Good, <laughs> good to we see you see too. You. <laughs> I missed you guys. Hey, Victor. Hi, Abby. How are you doing? I'm doing well. How are you today? I'm doing well. I'm very happy to see you. Safe I'm and happy. sound. <laughs> <laughs> I am safe. <laughs> I was I was only working at I was b doing a normal person's job for a week. <laughs> I was like, what is this? I have to leave the house to work? What's this all about? <laughs> No, it's good to be back. I'm very happy to see you guys. Okay. Sorry. I'm not sure who. Somebody has their microphone really close to their mouth. I can hear you breathing. Yeah. Darth Vader. Andre. Hi there. Long time I see. <laughs> I know. It's been a week. <laughs> <laughs> I feel I feel like I've been like it's like I've been away but it wasn't a vacation so I kind of feel like I've been I got ripped off <laughs> 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 But I'm still teaching outside on September 2nd is it the 2nd today? Yeah. Yes. yes. And I'm cold. I bought a new sweater. <laughs> <laughs> I won't be teaching outside for very long. Andrew, how was your weekend? Uh, weekend was uh, good. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I visited my family and so on. And you've got an exciting event coming up, no? Yeah. Yeah. You looking <laughs> right. forward to it? Uh, yeah. Why not? Uh. What are weddings like in Russia? Weddings, um, <laughs> um, they're crazy sometimes, <laughs> but <laughs> I hope I hope that this one it will it won't be yeah, such a such way. Well, it's good to see you. Thanks for coming. Um, Dammer, is that you? Yes. Can you hear me? Hey, I can. I can hear you a lot. <laughs> Got lots of noise going on. Where are you from, Dammer? I'm from Italy. I'm leaving Italy for uh, 15 years. Uh -huh. I was born in Sarajevo. Sarajevo in Bosnia. Where are you from originally? Bosnia, Bosnia Herzegovina. Okay. Croatia, wow, thank, you. thank you for coming to class. It's really nice to meet you. Thanks for joining me today. Me too. It's nice to come back and see some new students. Verbling's still going strong. <laughs> yeah, I'm studying uh, at the moment finance, marketing, and uh, administration in high school. And I think uh, I'm going to go to study in uh, South London next year. I would like to study business management in Edinburgh. Okay. My dream. Thank now you. I have to improve my English the next year. And we are a good way to this. Okay. Cool. Well, thank you for joining. Can you please mute your microphone? You have a lot of background noise. It's really, really, it's hard to hear you actually. So if you could move to a quieter spot, that would be ideal. If not, just mute your microphone and we can um, chat with you when, when it's your turn again, okay? Thank you for coming, Demir. It's nice to meet you. Anna. Hello, Abby. How are you? I am so happy to be back. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. It's good to see you. Thank 
good to see you. How have you been? <laughs> I'm very tired. I have a lot of work in my office. It's a busy day. Yes. Uh, well, it's good to have you. Thank you for taking time to, to come to class today. It's nice to see you again. Amp, is that you? Yes. Hey, how are you doing, Amp? I'm doing well, thank you. What about you? I'm doing very good. Thank you for asking. It's nice to see you again. Nice to see you as always. It's been, uh, it's been a long week away. It's been extremely busy. The busiest I've been in a long time, but it was good for me. It was a good experience, for sure. Yes, I, I, I just saw your, your pictures on Facebook. <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> it's funny because everybody thinks that I'm studying to be a hairstylist, and I'm not. Do you guys know what it is that I'm doing? Yes, we know. Yes. <laughs> Because every time I get messages all the time saying, "Teacher, you can do my hair," but I'm not doing hair. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you guys knew this about me, but I used to be a hairstylist before I taught English. So now I've combined my two careers, and I'm teaching hair. <laughs> what what does it mean, teaching hair? Um, so when I went to school, I had to go to school for a year and a half to learn how to be a hair a hairstylist. Uh -huh. So now I'm now I'm teaching young girls who've come out of school. I'm teaching at their college, at the same college that I learned how to do hair. I'm teaching other people how to do it. Uh -huh. Andrew, did you think I was just becoming a hairstylist? I thought uh, because I saw you uh, doing some uh, work for old lady some somewhere, and I <laughs> thought maybe you. Without, without <laughs> <laughs> you guys are making fun of me. I can't believe it. <laughs> <laughs> Mateo. Hi, Happy. How are you? I'm doing well. How are you? Uh, <laughs> um, today um, I'm a little bit sick. Sick? <laughs> what do you have? My 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 sh shoulder, back. Yeah. Here. Um, maybe um, I exaggerated in a in a swim, in a swimming pool. Oh, you irritated it. <laughs> yes. Irritated. I have problem, some problem. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. So you hurt yourself. Not a problem, no problem. <laughs> and you, it's okay. <laughs> I'm very good. Matteo was one of my students who asked me if I would cut his hair. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> if I come in, in Canada, I, I find uh, <laughs> who cut my hair. <laughs> I, will, I will teach you how to cut somebody else's hair. How about that? I just teach, okay. <laughs> no, I would cut your hair for sure. You might not like it, though. <laughs> no problem, no problem. Mirsa, welcome to the class. Uh, thank you, teacher. Nice to see you. I think you're new for me, no? Is this your first time yes. in my class? Yes, yes. Tell me uh, about yourself. Where are you from? I'm from Pakistan, but now I'm in Dubai. Now you're where? Dubai. In Dubai, okay. Tell yeah. me, what do you do? Well, I'm uh, I'm graphic designer. I'm doing job uh, in food company. Okay, very good. Do you like your job? Yes, I very like. Wonderful. Nice to meet you, Mirsa. Thanks for joining us today. Nice to have you. And last you. but not least, Ruben, welcome back. Thank you, teacher. How are you? I'm doing well. Good to see you again. Thanks for coming. Good to he good to be here. How was your weekend? Was well, awesome. It was really good. And it's getting better. Yesterday was a holiday in Canada. Was it a holiday for any of you guys? Uh, I don't know. Was no. a presidential no. No. speech? No. What did you say, Andre? Well, um, actually, I'm not sure how. Um, I think it's called Knowledge Day or something, something, something like that. It's because everybody thought uh, they. Um, um, study periods, or I think it's only in Russia, Andrei. Yes, I guess. <laughs> 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 
It's uh, it was a holiday in Canada. It was called Labor Day, which is Ali told me if it's Labor Day, you should be laboring. You should be at work, Abby. <laughs> it's, it's I think uh, World Peace Day, uh, first September. Oh really? We celebrate it, yeah, like Peace Day. Mm. But it's not a uh, holiday official. Was it peaceful? Uh, it depends. <laughs> where you're living, right? Depends where you're at. <laughs> yeah. Also, also in Canada, you have a Labor Day. Labor Day was yesterday, yeah. Uh, also in the uh, United States, uh, this. Uh, yes. it's, uh, I think so. I'm pretty sure. Uh, okay. Labor Day is the first May. Where you in live? In Europe, yes. In, in Italy, Europe, in yes. In Spain too. In the world, okay. only uh, not in Canada. Maybe. Because uh, we are older uh, cant country. Well, I was not feeling very good on Sunday night, but I think the reason is is guess where I went on Saturday? Does anyone know? No. I went. I, I, know. <laughs> I went to one of my favorite things. Does anyone know what it is? Can you repeat, please? Where did you go? I went to the rodeo. Yeah. Ah. ah, rodeo. We fall. Oh, interesting. <laughs> I know. And I was freezing cold. I was wearing sandals on my feet because it was sunny when I left. It was the sun was shining. It was beautiful. And then when I got to the rodeo, it was pouring rain and freezing cold. I think it was nine degrees and raining and I had oh, wow. bare feet. So then when I woke up on Sunday morning, I was feeling a little bit sick. I wasn't feeling very good and I was quite tired as well. I slept a lot. You only watched, right? <laughs> no, I was on. I was on the the bull. <laughs> eight, eight seconds. <laughs> wow. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'd have a sore back if I was on the bull. Sore back. <laughs> but, but the bull, uh, it's a uh, it's a true or false machine. <laughs> <laughs> Neither, Matteo. I was not on any ball. I hate to disappoint you. <laughs> no, you were uh, grabbing attention of uh, the, these balls, right? What was that, Andre? You were grabbing attention of these balls. <laughs> Getting the attention of the balls? Yeah, I was screaming. Yeah. I was screaming <laughs> at the top of my lungs. The friends that I went to the rodeo with, they were looking at me like this. We don't know her. <laughs> <laughs> I love the rodeo, and I haven't been to the rodeo in years, so I was quite excited, very excited to go. We're missing Mustafa. I can't believe it. <laughs> He's abandoned me. No, no. Maybe after. That's okay. Mustafa, no problem. <laughs> He's giving me the silent treatment for being away for so long. Today we're going to look at an article with 10 funny idioms. Now, some of these idioms we've definitely seen before, but for some of our new students or who haven't been around um, in recent classes, they'll definitely learn something new. I'll share the link with you guys. I feel like I, I haven't done this in so long. I'm a little bit lost. <laughs> I'm out of the loop. OK. You guys can open it up, and I'm also going to share my screen just to make it easier for you. Ten funny English idioms. Let's see here. Oops, maybe it's my connection. Can you guys hear me okay? Yes. Yes. We can. Yep. yes. Just for some reason, it's cutting out. Okay. Whoa. <laughs> big diff, big diff. <laughs> okay. Smiling. It's a yeah, it's a happy dog. <laughs> it's very horrible. Not happy dog, happy children. Right? Happy child. Yeah, she looks a little concerned. <laughs> okay, let's go ahead and get started. Maybe we could have um, Mirsa. Do you want to read that first little paragraph for us? 
okay uh, we get it idioms are weird and often have nothing to do with their literal meaning but here is a list of 10 of the funniest english idioms and how to use them exactly thank you for reading that for us so um mirsa do you know any idioms in english do you know one that you can remember no <laughs> ah good you're going to learn a lot today you're going to learn 10 yes <laughs> yes does anybody in the class have a favorite idiom? An idiom that they, they think is funny or that they use it all the time? No? Put, put your leg. Love is, love is blind. <laughs> We're bad boys. <laughs> Victor, what was yours? What did you say? Love is blind. Love is blind. That's a good one. <laughs> Very true. <laughs> That's my cup of tea. <laughs> yeah, that's another good one. We use that a lot in class, don't we? Elise is put your leg in your mouth, but that's not even an English idiom, so don't listen to him. <laughs> Time is money. Time is money. I like it. <laughs> good. Let's do the first one. Number one, Mateo, will you read it in the example? Okay. The lights are home, but nobody's home used to describe a stupid person. Okay, so an <laughs> example, the example, Matteo? Example, she really has no cl clue. The lights are um, but nobody's home. Okay, so let's see if we can understand this idiom. Any questions about it before we talk about some examples? Amp, why do you think the idiom means a stupid person? Why do you think it means that? Because because uh, even when the lights are up uh, on, uh, she is lost. Yeah, that's a good way of describing it. Or maybe by appearances, it looks like there is life or activity, but there's actually nobody there. There's nothing going on. Empty home, like empty home. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> you can see a person, but there's not a lot going on inside. <laughs> Maybe he or she has a brain, but uh, there is no knowledge in the brain. <laughs> exactly, <laughs> that's the idea. Empty brain. An empty brain. Yeah. An empty walnut. <laughs> <laughs> Um, okay, so what we're going to do is talk about when you would say this about somebody. When might you say, wow, the lights are on, but nobody's home? Who can give me an example? Maybe we can start with Ali. Oh, no. <laughs> it's, I'm back. <laughs> you better get ready. <laughs> uh, what do you mean uh, when we say? When, when might you say this about somebody? What might they do? What might you see that might cause this? Uh, For example, while driving. When might you say this about somebody else? Okay, maybe if someone, uh, when someone driving, uh, someone do something crazy, uh, uh, and uh, put uh, other people in danger, uh, something like that, uh, you can say that. Perfect, yeah, excellent. So maybe they make a, a poor move, maybe they run through a red light, or maybe they just don't do what they're supposed to be doing. Yeah, maybe uh, someone uh, driving a bike or motorcycle and uh, they... Uh, do their hands free or they do some attraction in traffic, something like that. Oh, that brings me back to the Dominican Republic. People would do stuff like that all the time. Yeah, some, it is some, crazy. Pe some people I can see make the motorcycle uh, one uh, tire. Uh, 
the uh, front of the motorcycle uh, like uh, up. I don't know how to say in English. And they are going fast. Popping wheelies. I don't know. <laughs> to pop. <laughs> I can't believe I know this. To pop a wheelie. We Oops, no, that can't be a wheel. Wheelie. I'm not sure how to spell it. To pop a wheelie, that's when you go back on your back tire on a motorbike. Yeah. Something like that. Okay. So you can use this expression or this idiom with people like that. But sometimes we use it when there's like no activity, when it seems like the person is completely inactive. Can anyone think of an example of when that would be the case, when you would say the lights are on but nobody's home? Um, Abby, uh, yeah? can I use these uh, idioms, uh, for example, when I see uh, some um, boys, teenagers, yeah. uh, as a um, fight with other teenager in front uh, of girl for example mm, not really because it's supposed to be like they're stupid as in they don't know something or they're not capable uh, of doing something okay for, for me this uh, kind of teenager is a stupid <laughs> that's true but that uh, would be like a different kind of stupid you know what I mean uh, different okay I not, can you hear me Yes, I do hear you, Demir. Do you have something to add? Okay. It sounds. It's correct to say the student never understands anything. That's a button on body song. Oh, Demir, I'm having a really hard time hearing you. Your voice is cutting out. Oh, Can the you student never understands anything. Yeah, if the student never understands anything. Exactly. Absolutely, good example. You'd say, whoa, okay. something's wrong with that student. The lights are on, but nobody's home. He does not get the idea or the point. Oh, I, I read uh, cr crazy. Ah, crazy man. Okay. Um, uh, for example, um, someone um, drive uh, in the bike uh, for one tire. With exactly. one tire, just one tire. Okay. Ah, okay. So he's acting, he's acting stupid or silly, right? Anyone Crazy. else? Okay, okay. An example? Maybe when you uh, describe someone's work, mm -hmm. what um, you want him something to do, and you you see that there is some activities in his brain or her brain, and <laughs> after that uh, you. You can you can see the job done. So. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely, not a lot of not not a lot happening up there. Yeah. For example, when I teach a class at eight in the morning, you could say, "Whoa, Abby, the lights are on, but nobody's home." <laughs> <laughs> Good. Who can think of a synonym, an idiom that would be synonymous with this to describe a stupid, a stupid person? Can anyone remember an idiom that describes somebody who's not very smart? Uh, you can lead a horse to drink, but you can force it, or something like that. I don't remember exactly. Okay, you're thinking of the idiom, you can lead About a horse. horse to the water, yeah. but you can't yeah. make it drink. But yeah. it's not the same, right? Like it's not quite the same. Not, no, because that's not a stupid person. That's a person who you cannot force to do something. Okay. Like when you, can't, um, you can show somebody the right way, but if they don't want to listen, you cannot control them. Anyone else think of a, a synonymous idiom with the lights are on but nobody's home? Okay. Do you Let's know go. some? Um... I'd have to think about it. I guess a few bricks short of a load. We haven't done that one for a long time. That's the one I can think of. A few bricks short or mm, I haven't seen this. Isn't or you could say he's got a few loose screws. A few loose screws. 
<laughs> so a load of bricks would be like if you had a wheelbarrow full of bricks, Andre, and a few of the bricks were missing. You could say, oh, it's not quite a full load. There's a few things missing. And it's the same thing with like a stupid person. He's got a few bricks short of a load. Okay. Or you could say... But, but I guess it's uh, kind of insulting, right, if you, the person hears about the human. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> or you could say there's not a lot going on upstairs. <laughs> upstairs being the brain, of course. Yeah. All right, next idiom. Damir, could you please read just number two, please? Damir, I had to mute you because there was noise in your microphone. Okay, Anna, do you want to read it for us? When pigs fly about something that will never happen. Example, yeah, right, you will get Taylor Swift to ask you on a date when pigs fly. Perfect. So, Anna, what does this mean, when pigs fly? Can you think of an example? Uh, this never happened in the life. Yeah, something that will never happen. Can you think of an example of something that would never happen? I don't know. Anything in life that just would never happen. Um, Russia and yeah and United United States uh, get get together. Uh oh. <laughs> so you could say when Russia when pigs fly. <laughs> Okay, so your um, your sentence could go something like this: mm -hmm. Russia and the United States will work well together when pigs fly, or we'll get yeah. along. <laughs> Interesting yeah. example. Yeah. Damir, you have something to say? Yeah. For an uh, example, oh, yeah, she's so sure. ugly. She's so ugly. I will agree. To go date with him, with she? With her? With her, sorry. When pigs fly. Okay, good example. I'll go out on a date with her when pigs fly. Never. Very good, Demir. Thank you for your example. Victor. Uh, yep. Can you think of an example? Uh, I will an interpreter in the U.S. when pigs fly. You will what, the U.S.? Interpreter, uh, translator, <laughs> from English to Russian, for example. I will be an interpreter for the U.S. when pigs fly. <laughs> Victor, you should have more faith in yourself. <laughs> Amp, it uses, there's a lot of animals who cannot fly. Why do you think it uses pigs, of all animals in this idiom? Why do you think we use pigs? Um, because it's like an exaggeration. <laughs> it's a fat animal that never is going to fly. It's, we in Spanish we said elephants. Elephants, yeah, there's a good one for sure. Yeah. Something heavy and kind of lethargic, yeah. right? Can you think of an example Amp, of something that will never happen when you could use the idiom? Um, I would uh, think on life when the pigs fly. You will what in life? I, I would see it on life <laughs> when pigs fly. I didn't. I don't think I heard you. Sin. Sí. On life. Uh, in vivo. On life. On life. A knife? Like a, una cuchara? No. On knife. Life. I don't know why I can't hear you. Sorry, Amp. Do you want to type it for me? Yep. 
on live. Okay, now I want you to repeat the whole sentence again. Sorry, Em. Can you write the whole sentence? I would sing. Okay. I would sing live when pigs fly. On live is, is what was throwing me off. You could say, I would sing live when pigs fly. Okay. Good job, Em. Thank you very much. Anybody else have an example of something you would never do or something that would never happen? I would become a Formula One pilot when pigs fly. <laughs> but I thought you were already a Formula One pilot, Andre. <laughs> really? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, good. Mateo, what about you? Oh, sorry, what? I'm just uh, similar to one of these pilots. <laughs> it's you're, <not> me. <laughs> you're a Formula, Formula Lemon pilot. <laughs> Mateo, what about you? What is something that would uh, never happen? Um, I, I think, uh, for example, uh, when uh, the father uh, said uh, uh, fa the son, uh, when pigs fly, you will realize your dream, for example. Ouch! That's not a very nice father, Mateo. Sorry? That's not a nice father. Uh, okay, but, but uh, <laughs> uh, is there uh, this kind of fighter? <laughs> Absolutely, that's a perfect example. He'd say, "Yeah, you'll you'll reach your dreams when pigs fly, son." Mm. Dreamer, dreamer. <laughs> exactly, you're a dreamer. Perfect. Good. Anybody else want to share an example? When pigs fly, my phone is ringing, and you are telling that you're dying to see me. Who? <laughs> <laughs> me? Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's the words are from a song. Oh, <laughs> what song is it? Once in a Blue Moon. <laughs> <laughs> Who sings it? There's another idiom. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's why I remember. It sounds like a song about idioms. I like it. <laughs> I will Perfect. send you a, a link. Okay, sounds good. Number three, Andre, could you read number three for us? Yeah, um, to have a Van Gogh's ear for music. Uh, to be tone deaf. Van Gogh only had one ear. Example, uh, is it Xavi, Xavi or Javi? Xavi. Xavi. Uh, Xavi really shouldn't play the piano, he has a Van Gogh, how to pronounce that? Uh, Van Gogh, Go goes, yeah. Goes, uh, a goes year for music. Excellent. Okay, so what's the idea behind this idiom? What does it mean to be tone deaf, Andre? Uh, I guess um, someone can't um, uh, really play or sing correctly. I mean, uh, he doesn't... Uh, uh, notice, notice uh, right tones or exactly. notes, I'm not sure. Exactly, very good. Do you think you have Van Gogh's ear for music? Uh, <laughs> partly yes, I <laughs> think. Uh, <laughs> Does anybody in the class have Van Gogh's ear for music? They cannot sing, play the piano, or they're not musically talented? Yes. yes. <laughs> exactly about all me. <laughs> all class. Anna, can you sing or play any musical instruments? No, I, I, I don't know. I don't know. No, you don't know anything about singing or playing an instrument? No, <laughs> I would like that. I don't know how to, how to do it. Okay, so you have Van Gogh's ear for music. Congratulations. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank you. <Will. laughs> Just listen. What about you? I, I love the music, but for me, it's impossible to play any instrument. <laughs> it's very difficult. Yeah, it's not easy. It's not the easiest thing. 
I, for the first time in probably, I think, seven years, I pulled out my electric guitar this weekend. Wow. I, was, I was rocking but you, out. But you have an electric guitar? I do. <laughs> ah, I think uh, just a uh, um, classical uh, guitar. I have an acoustic and I have two yeah. electric. Wow! What I'm a rock star, look like, look like ACDC. Wow! Yeah, I painted my face and everything. <laughs> <laughs> okay, good. What did you say, Andre? Do you have a question? What What did you play? I was playing all sorts of things. I was playing well, nothing really, nothing really in like that should be on an electric guitar, but my acoustic guitar is in Mexico, so I had to play on my electric. <laughs> uh, I was playing the song Blackbird from the Beatles. I don't know if you know that song, Blackbird. Yeah. Blackbird? Blackbird by the Beatles. No, I don't know. Um, I don't like Beatles. <gasps> I'm sorry, I don't like <laughs> Now we know yesterday. <laughs> <For sure. Yeah. laughs> I like Led Zeppelin. Led Zeppelin. Oh, I like Led Zeppelin too. Uh, okay. And I was playing Alone by Heart. I don't know if you know that one. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I was having some fun, Andre. A little of this, a little of that. You should you should record some music. <laughs> yes, actually, I will. I will. Okay. Anyone else want to talk about that idiom or can think of something that's similar to it? I think. Nowadays, many famous singer have Van Gogh's ear for music. Perfect sentence, too. <laughs> Good job. It's more about how you look, Victor, don't you know? If you're good-looking, you can be a famous singer. Okay, number four, Amp. To pick out, to eat a lot very quickly. Example: After the marathon, the runners pigged out a dinner at a dinner buffet. Very good. Pigged, pigged out, pigged out. Excellent. Can you think of an example, Amp, of when you pig out? Um, when somebody might do that? Yes, there are. And uh, now there are some programs of on television where you can see the the host just pigged, pigging out. Ew! Like an eating competition? Yes, it's like a challenge for them. Would you ever do that, Amp? Would you ever enter a, a food competition where you have to eat a lot very quickly? Not at all. No, it's gross. You know, I did once. <laughs> what do you eat? And I won. <laughs> That's the embarrassing part. It was at um, a restaurant. Some, can can you some? I don't know who it is because it's not showing up. But if you guys have your microphone close to your mouth, we can hear you breathing. I'm not sure who it is. Um, if you remember a show called Fear Factor, Fear Factor. Has anyone seen that where you have to eat really gross things? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I Off entered it. Um. Yeah, exactly. I entered a competition where they put a whole bunch of really gross ingredients into a blender and they made like a huge basically like a really disgusting milkshake out of all these gross like fish and eggs and peppers like hot pe pepper it was really disgusting it was me and two men that were like huge the biggest men I'd ever seen <laughs> and they both puked, and I ate it. <laughs> and I won tickets to a hockey game. Can you believe it? I can't believe I did that for tickets to a hockey game, but that was a while. You participated in that show, and they... I, Andrew, they, I didn't just participate. I won. And they uh, have a record of that? I mean, uh, did they show it on TV, or...? No, it was um, like a, a local, it was on the radio, it wasn't on the TV. Ah, okay. But we went, it was at a restaurant, and I wasn't, I didn't even know it was happening, and I went and they said, we're having a competition, there was a bunch of people, who wants to enter? And I was like, I'll enter, but I didn't know what it was for. <laughs> so, 
I did like an obstacle course where you have to climb through things or like pick things up yeah. with your mouth <laughs> and move them. And I made it to the finals, but the final was you had to eat this disgusting, like big tall milkshake. It was like this big. You had to drink the whole thing. Well, and it how was did you do that? <laughs> I just did it. I don't know. It was mind over matter. I had good control. <laughs> Crazy. But the two big, like these two big men, they were one here and one here, and I was in the middle like this, and I drank it, and they were like, wah, they couldn't do it. <laughs> <laughs> when was that? I think I was like 17. It was like 10 years ago. It was a long time ago. <laughs> I was crazy. I wouldn't do that now. <laughs> it was really gross, though. So can anyone else think of it? When do people pig out? When does that happen? Ali, can you think of an example? About me or... Yeah. Oh, no, about anyone that you know. When do people eat a lot very quickly? Uh, I think... Uh... In my country, or uh, many Islam uh, country, mm -hmm. when after people uh, fasting, you know, Ramadan, uh, they stay uh, hungry from uh, morning to evening, and uh, they eat evening. When when uh, uh, they uh, uh, want to eat dinner, they uh, like uh, eat like a pig out. Something. Exactly, because they're starving, right? Yeah. <laughs> Perfect. Anyone else have an example? Uh, in the army, soldiers often have to pig out. Because they have to get back to work? Uh, because they have uh, only a few seconds for eat. <laughs> exactly. They have to get back to the, to the job. Yeah. Good. Number five, um, Ali. Okay, everything but the kitchen sink. Almost everything has been included. Example? Yeah, an example. Maria was trying so hard to get, get the question right, but uh, right, she was throwing out everything but kitchen sink. I'm not quite sure how that example applies, to be honest with you. It's a terrible <laughs> example. Yeah. Um, I was so hungry, I ate everything but the kitchen sink. There's an example for you. Who is that? Uh, I don't know. Mirsa, I'm going to mute you. I don't know what you're doing, but it's uh, scaring me. <laughs> 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 okay, so who can give me an example of when you might include almost everything? Yeah, or for a example, sentence. Mm -hmm. He was going to a vacation and he took everything but the kitchen sink with him. Perfect. Sounds like how a woman likes to pack, right, Victor? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Good. Anyone else? So when you almost include everything. Almost, uh, but you forgot something, right? Or no, almost. Not you forgot necessarily. It's just saying, like, y you cannot literally bring the kitchen sink with you because it's attached to the kitchen. So the idea is that you bring everything, even if it's unnecessary, and you leave behind obvious things. Maybe I got everything but the kitchen sink when I back, uh, was backpacking. Very good. So you brought, as, you brought tons of stuff with you when you went backpacking. Yeah. Okay. Very good. Anna, when you travel, do you bring everything but the kitchen sink, or do you pack light? No, I usually rent a car, and I have to buy everything for the kitchen. 
<laughs> so you bring a lot of stuff with you when you travel. <laughs> what about you, Mateo? When you travel, do you pack light or do you bring everything but the kitchen sink? Um, usually, uh, when I rent a car, mm -hmm. uh, Yes, yes, for me, everything but the kitchen sink when I rent a car, yes. No, 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 when you, um, oh, I see what you're saying. You guys are talking about renting a car that is fully loaded, that has all the options. Uh, usually, I not take uh, the options. You do not. Just, just do not, just, uh, just uh, rent, okay? Just the basics. Basics. In this case, uh, for me, it's okay. Everything but the kitchen sink uh, when I rent a car. Okay. I think we're maybe we're misunderstanding. Everything but the kitchen sink is when you include almost everything or many, many things. Ah, okay, okay, okay. For example, wow, look at that. Uh, it has everything. We couldn't hear you. Yeah. Sorry. Wow, look at that hamburger. It has everything but the kitchen sink, meaning it's a, a hamburger that is full of all ah, kinds okay. of ingredients. Okay. Okay. It's a, it's a big burger, big, exactly. bigger burger. Okay. Good okay, job. Okay. Can we say about, uh, for example, our new store has everything but the kitchen sink? Awesome example, Victor. Good. Any you. you can get anything at that store. Yeah, uh, maybe a house. Uh, you want to buy a big house and luxury house. Okay. Everything but the kitchen sink. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> because it's luxury. <laughs> Except you have a luxury <laughs> bed house, <laughs> Ali. Ali. You have a luxury car, Ali. <laughs> that's hilarious. Yeah, that's the only time when you probably should not use that idiom. <laughs> <laughs> no kitchen sink. I can't live there. <laughs> okay, Victor, number six. To put a sock in it. To tell someone <laughs> no is it to be quiet. <laughs> For example, Jane was yelling while I was studying, so I told her <laughs> to put a sock in it. <laughs> You know, this brings back terrible childhood memories of my father, this idiom. <laughs> <laughs> so when might you say this to someone, Victor? When somebody is annoying you, you can to say that, to ah. put a sock in it. Exactly. Put a sock in it, Victor. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Anyone else? Amp, when would you say it? Or Ali? Well, somebody is singing uh, very bad noise. Exactly, yeah. If there's a bad singer or somebody singing karaoke and they're terrible, you might say, put a sock in it. Or some, someone playing uh, electric guitar. <laughs> uh, with someone <laughs> electric guitar, same you. Are you Your neighbors. You Mateo, do you think he's talking about me? No, no, not about you. Andrew, no, would, no. Andrew wouldn't do that, would he? No. We yes, talk uh, about talking about someone. you because you you <laughs> sing <laughs> for he's your neighbor. About, <laughs> he's talking about some uh, of one goes ear for music. Yeah. Ah, oh, too funny, too funny. <laughs> Anyone else? Amp, can you think of a time when you might say that to somebody? Yes, when we are in church, uh, at church, and some uh, babies start crying. And interrupt all the service. Exactly. Perfect. Yeah. Um, you might. Well, you might not say it, but you'd think it, right? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> if you said to somebody at church, "Can you put a sock in it to their baby?" They probably won't be very happy with you, Amp. <laughs> Good. Okay. Let's go to number seven. Mateo, read number seven. Okay. To have a Cast iron stomach to have no problems eating or drinking anything. Example, I think I would be sick if I ate all that, that food, but Joe seems to have a cast iron stomach. Oh. 
A cast iron stomach. So cast iron is a material that's extremely hard and made of metal or, well, iron, obviously. Okay? So a cast iron stomach is a stomach that can handle anything. You, you could... Jalapeno, uh, no problem. You could uh, eating or drinking anything. Because exactly. <laughs> Nothing bothers you. Matteo, do you have a cast iron stomach? Mm, no. What can't you eat? What can't? Can't, can't. you eat? What is something that you cannot eat? Yeah. Ah no. Uh, usually I I can't eat uh, uh, anything, but uh, I can't um, a lot of eating or drinking. Okay. Uh, much, much. Okay. You can't eat too much. Okay, after I have a problem. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Oh, can you hear the Canadian geese? Yeah. I think they're flying to Mexico. I should get to ride with them. <laughs> <laughs> okay, good. Um, anyone else think of an example of what you could not eat if you had, if you didn't have a cast iron stomach? I have an example. Okay, tell me, Anna. Abby has a cat's iron stomach since he drank this, uh, that awful drink. <laughs> That's true. Good example, because I ate that drink. That's true. I didn't say I didn't suffer later. <laughs> Good. Okay, number eight. Um, Andre. Uh, to drink like a fish, to drink heavily. Uh, example, the group at the bar seems to be in, having a party and you can tell he's the birthday boy because he's drinking like a fish. Perfect. Good example. Can you think of a sentence, Andre, using this idiom? What sentence? Um, for example, uh, in Russia, in weddings, people drink uh, like a fish sometimes. They drink like fishes. Like fishes, yeah. Yeah, good job, excellent. Ali, an example using a sentence. Uh, okay. Uh, when I was younger, uh, I used to drink uh, like a fish, but not now. Okay, very good. <laughs> Anyone else have an example? Uh, can we can say? Uh, he can, he can drink like a fish, but after that, he looks like he didn't. Yeah, you could, meaning that you would never notice that he doesn't look bad. He looks fine. Yeah. <laughs> Very good. And Victor, we would say he can handle his alcohol. That's how you would say that. The bike, maybe. <laughs> he can handle his booze, meaning he can drink a lot, but you don't notice. It doesn't appear like he has. Mm -hmm. Anyone else? I say the, uh, the bikers who drink like a fish. Bikers? A group of bikers uh, <laughs> drink beer, a lot of beer. You better be careful. <laughs> <laughs> Good, yeah, that's true. Usually bikers like to have a, a drink. Okay, number nine. Number nine. Uh, um, Anna. Use your love. <laughs> Use your head and think smart. Example, come on, Pet Parker. Use your love. I know you can solve this problem. Beautiful. Good reading. So a loaf is like a loaf of bread, and it's comparing the loaf to what? To the head. To the head, yeah, to your brain. So use your loaf is like saying use your brain. Think. And Amp, can you read number 10 for us? Finger looking good, extremely tasty. Example, my mom makes the best stick. It's finger looking good. Okay, good. Any questions or comments on those last two idioms? Okay, let's think of a time when you should... Okay, I'll take that off so you guys can't see it. I'm going to ask you a question. 
When do people When do people forget to use their loaves? Who can think of an example? When they are in the um, AB class. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> Andrew, it should be the opposite. When you come to class, you should be ready to use your loaf. <laughs> but they forget to use it. <laughs> Why? They, they should be, but they forget. <laughs> I don't. I don't know why. When they are under stress, Amp, say that one for us. Yes, when they are under stress. Why do you think that happens? Yes, yeah, so they just get confused and they don't think too much. Uh, for example, a woman um, last month, for example, she 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 was. Uh, just talking by cell phone, um, she she didn't see a, a man. It was uh, in oh, no. in the ne next to the uh, the, st the street, right. and just uh, she tried to to push the the brake, and just she pushed the, the accelerator because she got ne nervous. She wasn't using her loaf. Yeah, mm -hmm. not at all. Yeah, so when people are under, when they come to my class and when they're under stress, <laughs> I'm concerned. Anyone else have an example of when people forget to use their loaves? When people are, lights are on but nobody's home. <laughs> Good. <laughs> Good job. Yeah, that's when they forget to use their loaf. Uh, when the people buy something after watched um, a spot on the TV. When people do what? Can you do it one more time? Say it one more time. Uh, for example, um, you watch the TV. Okay? Mm -hmm. Watch? You, or what? And you watch the... No, watch, watch, watch. Okay. Watch the TV. Okay. Watch, watch. And you watch uh, a spot, spot uh, um, for buy something, buy I don't know. An, phone. an advertisement. Okay, and after you watch the uh, this spot on the TV, after you uh, walking uh, fast for buy this something. Ah, when you race to buy it after you see an advertisement. Advertisement. Instead of thinking. Sorry. Advertisement is a spot, uh, okay, in the... So they buy without thinking, a compulsive purchase. Compulsive purchase. Example, Matteo, yeah, buying things that you don't actually need. Yes, in this case, uh, you forget to use the, your loaves. <laughs> uh -huh. Yeah, my loaf! <laughs> <laughs> Good. Uh can we say, for example, use your loaf, use your loaf if you have one? <laughs> yes, you can. <laughs> or you could say, protect your loaf. You could say it for anything if you cover your loaf. Cover your loaf, put your hood on. <laughs> Anytime where you're talking about the brain, you could call it a loaf if you wanted to. Or a walnut, which is my favorite. Because it does look like a little brain, a walnut. When people d uh, drink too much, maybe drink, they can't use their loaves. Absolutely. Good example, Ali. Or uh, in love, someone. When you fall in love, oftentimes it's difficult to use your loaf. <laughs> yes. Until it's too late. <laughs> Good. Okay, well, I have a private lesson now, and then I think we've got three hours together. So hopefully I'll see some of you guys again. Thank you for coming. You did a good job with that. Any questions before we close? Mateo, go eat. <laughs> no, no, I don't have. <laughs> <laughs> no, eat. Uh, I eat. Uh, go, go and pick today, up. Today, today, <laughs> yes, uh, it's, uh, now it's a time. It <laughs> go, go eat your dinner and we'll talk later. Okay, <laughs> but today I I have I don't have um hungry. Okay. Well, thank you guys so much for coming. Take care and we'll see you in a little bit, I hope.
Bye, bye. Thank you, bye. Thank you very much, Evie.